The Mavericks just lost in five, but who cares? This was a huge step forward for the Mavericks and for Luka. But I did see a huge problem against the Warriors and really the entire playoffs. I'm concerned that if Luka doesn't fix this, he will never be a champion, just another great player. But I'm not taking it as far as some media with these hot takes. Is Luka Doncic just becoming the Dallas version of James Harden? Always has the ball initiates a ton of contact. Everything goes through him. By the end of the game, you're just a liability. As great as he's been, like Harden, he didn't come into the season in shape. It's James Harden. Uh, yeah, except for Luka actually gets better in the playoffs. Are you even watching? James Harden doesn't even show up for the biggest games. But the problem that the Warriors just exposed is the same problem as James Harden. It is all about Luka on offense. Whenever Luka scores 40 or more points in a playoff, game it's almost a guaranteed loss the Mavericks are two and six Luka doesn't play defense so the rest of his team is gassed from covering for him so they can't hit shots consistently I mean look at Reggie Bullock and Dorian Finney-Smith against Golden State now the obvious cure for this is to get Luka better teammates but are we even sure that Luka can change the way he plays even if they do get him help According to Cleaning the Glass, Luka has the highest usage rate for his position in the NBA. And the crazy thing, he dominates the ball even more in the playoffs. That is a huge red flag. Only losers do that. Now, I'm only going to throw out one more stat at you because I really think it's interesting. I'm not trying to be Jimmy High Roller. These are the highest usage rate seasons in NBA history. Luka is in the top 10 twice. Who's number one? Russell Westbrook. Number two, James Harden. You literally have to go down to 39th all time to find a winning season. Michael Jordan's Bulls in 1993. Luka has to change. Now, the good news is he says he's going to learn from this experience. But talk is cheap. Everybody says the right thing after a big loss. Stars changing is rare. The story of how Michael Jordan learned this lesson is fascinating. But first, guys, I am super excited to be working with DraftKings Sportsbook because number one, it's the playoffs. And number two, they're giving us a sick deal. So new customers who use my promo code bet just $5 on any team and they get $150 in free bets if that team wins 30 to 1 odds and all you have to do is pick any team to win one playoff game this is like if you bet detroit to beat golden state in the seven game series and detroit actually won it would pay off huge but you can pick any team DraftKings sportsbook customers also can bet the league with same game parlays it's a huge advantage for example if i thought that miami was actually going to beat boston that would mean that i think miami's offense is going to finally wake up so i would pick the over so it's an advantage to be able to bet same game parlays at DraftKings, you can do that so download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use my promo code AM hoops you bet just five dollars on any pro basketball team and you get a hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they win that game that's promo code AM hoops at DraftKings Sportsbook thanks so much to them for being a sponsor you notice that MJ is number five on that usage rate list from 1987 his coach was Doug Collins he ran everything through Michael which was a good idea but then Phil Jackson got there and changed everything basically I was planning to ask Michael who had just won his third scoring title in a row to reduce the number of shots he took so that other members of the team could get more involved in the offense as a result he probably wouldn't be able to win another scoring title and that hurt Michael Jordan's ego and initially he was like no way we are not doing that but then he thought about it and decided he cared more about winning than being the man so Scottie Pippen took on a point forward role as a former point guard before his growth spurt. The triangle offense shared the ball, even though MJ was still the closer. The Bulls finally broke through to win a chip in 1991. Does Luka have that MJ mentality to actually share the ball to win, or is he like James Harden? We're more likely to see Harden, you know, in a club than in a gym in the offseason. And right now, that's the case with Luka. When MJ got pushed around in 1990, he called his trainer day one of the offseason to hit the weights. Is that Luka? 
We will see if that's who Luca is. The real test will be, though, when they get him better teammates. Who can the Mavs realistically get to be Luca's Scottie Pippen? First, I want to touch on one more James Harden comparison. People ripped Luca when the Suns were targeting him over and over on defense. One more sign that Luca is a one way star. And who's like the last one way superstar to win multiple chips? Steph Curry, Larry Bird, it's rare. These are the last 10 finals MVPs. Everyone is good on defense. And it wasn't just the Suns that exposed Lucas D. The Warriors did it too. I couldn't believe how he just gave up like this in an elimination game. Like I understand getting beat off the dribble by a guy like Steph Curry, but this is embarrassing. This is a James Harden-like trait. But are we sure that Luka is a bad defender? I have a hot take but I have video evidence as proof. Luka is not bad on defense. He's just tired. Here's Luka against the Clippers in the bubble. People forget this. He stays in front of Paul George in space on the perimeter. That is tough. Forces a pass and then a Kawhi brick or forcing Marcus Morris into a bad shot. Luka is 6'7", 230. That means he can be versatile. Check out the strip on Avica Zubats. That was three really good wing players and a center, and Luka was good. So it is in him. He just needs to take his fitness seriously, unlike James Harden, and to get better teammates. So who do the Mavericks need? Well, the Warriors exposed that Dallas needs a rim protecting center, obviously. They need help on the wing and a star number two. So this is the list of guys that the Mavericks could look to trade for this offseason. I put them in tiers from best to worst. Tier one, two-way players, DeAndre Ayton and Jeremy Grant. Tier two, one-way players that I think could still be two-way players. Bradley Beal, Ben Simmons. Tier three, definitely one-way players. Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, Zach Levine, Damian Lillard, D'Angelo Russell, Kyrie Irving, and the Keep Dreaming tier, LeBron James, Joel Embiid. You know, if Embiid gives up on Philly, it's a long shot, but I'm just throwing it out there. Or the Mavs could wait until next offseason to see who's available. But there's one big issue with getting any star. Jalen Brunson is a free agent this offseason, and it could mess up everything. In the playoffs, he was their second best player. Brunson had about 23 points on 75% from two, four assists, and just one turnover per game. And that's with Luka dominating the ball. Reports say the Pistons and Knicks could make a run at Brunson for about 20, 25 million a year with a bigger role in their offense. So if Dallas wants to keep him, they're gonna have to pay up. And it sounds like Mark Cuban wants to keep him. We can pay him more than anybody, you know, and I think, um. I think he wants to stay and that's most important. Okay, that's great, but there is a huge problem. If they pay Brunson, they are locking in this roster going forward. And I think we just saw this roster ceiling. If they overpay for Brunson, they can't afford any superstar in free agency. And look, Brunson is good, but he's only six foot one, not a plus defender. But if they don't pay him, I guarantee this roster is gonna take a step back. And I don't know how happy Luke is gonna be about that. The Mavs have a lot of work to do to surround Luka with better talent, but Luka also, I think, has to decide, does he want to be more like Michael Jordan, or is the media right, and he's just the next James Harden? I have great news for Atlanta Hawks fans. I love your team so much, and I feel so bad for trashing Trey Young back in the day that I did your off-season video twice. Actually, it was a mistake. I'm lumping in three teams at a time now, and I stupidly just did the Hawks twice. It was really dumb, uh, but you're welcome. So if you wanna see that video, actually I'm happier about it the second time around. Really interesting offseason for the Hawks, the Hornets, and the Pelicans, especially in the NBA draft for all three teams, and Zion's extension. Uh, check that video out and the rest of the offseason playlist right here.